1915, Myron Spaulding came to San Francisco as a young boy with a good violin and an interest in boats. He designed and built one himself at Polytechnic High School. After graduation, he earned an additional degree in music, which eventually won him a seat in the San Francisco Symphony. He was a violinist like other people are plumbers. It was a trade for him, and he you know, belonged to the union, and he'd go down to the union hall and get a job and go and perform. But all along, boats were his first love. Myron was a great sailor. He was the best yeah. sailor on the bay. Yeah. In his early 20s, he was racing and winning several class championships sailing on the bay. And how you could see that in the racing was he was observing Mother Nature and being open-minded about how it related to the wind that might be a little different angle and the runoff that was going this way, and it would change which direction he would go. But he did it with this different background, not trying to dominate Mother Nature, trying to understand Mother Nature. In 1936, he won the Transpac race, a skipper of Dorade, a 52-foot yawl designed by Sparkman and Stevens. A few years later, he opened a naval architecture office of his own, creating designs like the Spaulding 33, several of which still sail the bay. One of his best creations, the 45-foot yawl Chrysopoli, has been well-maintained and enjoyed by several owners over many years. It's considered a classic of boat design. They sail like little beautiful witches. They're wonderful sailboats. And Myron was always thinking, not just the craft of the building, he wanted the boat to work in the wind and the water. He really wanted that, and he yeah. achieved it. And what made Myron unique is that he was, you know, he was both a designer and a builder. He knew the practical part of doing it, and that's the best kind of designer. In 1951, he bought a waterfront site in Sausalito and built Spalding Boat Works, starting an operation that would involve many other workers, boat owners, and lovers of fine craft. There are a lot of boat builders around, but Myron is really unique in that he, he really thought about things and did them in a very, very rational, thought-through manner. I mean, everybody thinks about stuff, but he was particularly good at it. <laughs> and insisted on, you know, thinking things through. He really understood thrift and the ability to reuse things. So even a short length of line had many uses, many lives that could be experienced around here. He was teaching theory. That's yeah. what he was teaching. It wouldn't matter if it was a wood boat, a cat boat, a schooner. It, he was going through all of it and it would happen, like I just said, randomly. He'd be in the middle of a job and he would go, oh no, do it this way kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So he was an amazing gift to me of teaching me all kinds of endless things. We used to have lunch uh, together at, down at Rico's in Sausalito here. It was $2.50 for full lunch. And Myron would hold court every day at noon. There'd be six, eight, ten people at the table. And yeah. Myron would talk about the cruising club rule or the boats and the old days. And he educated his kids. Uh, and, and he gave everybody his knowledge. Working almost to the end, Myron Spaulding died in the year 2000. It was his widow, Gladys, who decided to create a non-profit center to carry on his ideas and way of working. She wanted a working facility. Boats would be brought here, boats would be worked on, uh, new things could happen. Over these first years, the center has built an active program of four parts, preservation, restoration, education, and community. There are always older wooden boats in need of preservation, but only a few can be restored. Frida is one of the lucky ones. Built in 1885, she's the oldest active sailing yacht on the West Coast, 
Frida is a joint project of the Center and the Arquez School of Traditional Boat Building. Here they are deciding one of the final touches, marking the waterline. One of the educational activities of the center is a yearly class for young people initiated by Craig Southard. The idea was to create a boat building program where the kids would learn sailing and how to build a boat using traditional techniques, solid wood. You start these kids with a pile of wood is sitting over here and you say, okay, we're going to teach you all the hand tool skills and, and boat building skills to turn this pile of wood into a boat. And then you're going to take the boat that you built out on the water and you're going to understand how it works and you're going to understand the craft that went into it. And that's what we've done. We're on our fourth boat now. Barbecued oysters a la Tom. Every month we have an open house we have barbecue and we give tours of the Spalding Center. They can see the youth program going and just walk around. Beyond the boatyard, the center also makes its presence known at events such as the Tiburon Wooden Boat Show, giving out information to attendees and sailboats to the children. classic motor launch donated to the center is used for tours of the Sausalito waterfront, which are open to the public. Wanda is a, Wanda is a classic yacht. Yeah. It was owned by Fred of Fred's Restaurant and uh, Wilma Point Harbor. Some people call that Darth Vader. I don't know why. I do want to invite people to come to the Spalding Center to become a member and to be part of this unique place. This is becoming a, a lost art and it should not be that way. In these times, people need things like this. You know, people need to work with their hands, to touch wood, to be surrounded by this piece of history. Every sailor in San Francisco Bay is indebted to Meyer. Very few of them are aware of it. He taught me an attitude or a style toward work in general, uh, not anything specific. You know, it's fundamentally that it was good to do the job properly for its own sake. Not so much for the function, but because you would feel better about it. I mean, I feel Myron's boats like Naughty Gal, Buoyant Girl, Chrysopoli should be looked at like a Mona Lisa. It was totally devoted to the art form, to the craft, to the engineering, to the whole, whole ball of wax. He believed in the truth, you know? <laughs> Not many people do. <laughs> he believed there was such a thing. That's what I liked about Myron. Just as Myron was a man of modest means, so is the Spalding Wooden Boat Center a modest enterprise. But it needs and deserves continued support, preserving standards of quality and craftsmanship that are more and more rare in our world. Onward.